We test and review a lot of things on this channel, and most of the time, they're quantitative things that we can explain using numbers. We can give you a frame rate or a temperature, and you'll know exactly what we're talking about. But when it comes to sound, well, that one's a bit trickier. Until now. This is our super accurate sound measuring box of science, or SESMSBS for short. First, a recommendation. Listen to this video using headphones or decent speakers because we'll be illustrating some of the things that might not come across over the speakers on a mobile device. Let's start off with the basics. This is a frequency response graph, which is a visual representation of sound waves measured in hertz. The range goes from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which is the approximate range that an average human can hear. It's typically broken up into three sections, bass, mid-range, and treble. Bass starts at 20 hertz on the left and extends all the way up to 200 hertz. This is where you'll find sounds like explosions, bass instruments, and of course, epic dubstep bass drops. You can actually feel this range of sound, especially in a movie theater. The next section from 200 hertz to 2000 hertz is called the mid-range and features the majority of sounds that you hear. In the audiophile world, however, the mid-range more commonly refers to voices and instruments. This is what our audio sounds like when we filter out all other frequencies. And finally, we have treble on the right side of the graph from 2000 hertz to 20,000 hertz. This includes all high-pitched noises such as bells, cymbals, and bird feet. Hopefully all that newfound knowledge didn't just go in one ear and out the other. Now, let's move on to our sadness. On the outside, it looks like any other ordinary box, but on the inside, oh boy. We've lined the inside with a full suite of acoustic foam from AeroZoom designed to reduce stray reflections inside. If you want to learn more about this foam, you can click up here for a previous video where we described what kind of foam we used and how we used it. But for now, let's get to testing. Since this is our first real measurement with the SASMUS, let's start with three different categories to try and highlight the differences in sound you hear and what that looks like on paper. A full-size speaker, a portable speaker, and a cell phone. For our measurements, we're using a mini DSP UMIK1 digital calibrated microphone. It's specifically tested and calibrated to record as neutral and accurate a sound as possible. Normal condenser microphones, such as Blue Yeti or the Rode NTG2 shotgun that we use here in the studio, are designed to accentuate certain frequencies and color the sound, making voices sound better. A truly neutral microphone might be accurate, but it also makes most voices and music sound dull and boring. All of this is fed into a laptop running Room Equalizer Wizard, which is able to generate pink noise and display a real-time analyzer frequency response graph. Pink noise is used for calibration because it represents a noise where each octave carries an equal amount of energy. Theoretically, a perfect speaker should output a noise that displays a perfect flat line. But remember, this is not a soundproof laboratory. We're doing as much as we can to get an accurate reading, but these are still just estimates. For our full-size speaker, we're going with the Kanto U6. This is what our frequency response graph looks like with our noise generator playing periodic pink noise. And the pink line shows the average, while the black line shows the real-time feed. The graph is most accurate when both lines overlap each other perfectly. If they're separated, then this is just residual noise and not stuff being played by the speaker. As you can see, the area under the graph from 35 hertz all the way up to 10,000 hertz is very even, so the speaker produces a very balanced, neutral sound. The peaks at 40 hertz and 70 hertz tell us that this speaker produces a good amount of bass for a bookshelf speaker, and in many cases, you wouldn't even need a subwoofer. But if you wanted to add one, you could set set up the crossover at around 40 hertz to evenly blend in the sound. The highs start rolling off at 10,000 hertz, which means the speaker never sounds sibilant or piercing with the highs, but it's also not as bright and sparky as it could be. The next speaker is our favorite portable speaker, the Logitech UE Boom. The black and red lines begin overlapping at 70 hertz and stay together through to 20,000 hertz. This time, however, there is a lot more vertical variation. Right away, we know that the UE Boom produces a lot less bass because it rolls off starting from 75 hertz and below. The highs are noticeably weaker than the mids and the bass, but this was done on purpose. Because portable speakers are so small and physically can't produce bass very well, the slightly overpowered midsection 
section makes the overall sound warmer and bassier than it really is. If it had balanced highs, then our ears would perceive the speaker as too high and tinny and with not enough bass. Finally, here is the measurement for our pink noise played on a Galaxy S7 speaker. As you can see, the speaker is only able to produce sounds from 300 Hz and up, which means there is literally no bass at all. There is a peak at 7000 Hz, which is a very common frequency used for alerts and ringtones. This makes sense since you want those as loud as possible with zero bass and very weak midsection. This produces a very tinny sound that's very fatiguing to listen to for long periods of time like you're alive. So what was the purpose of all this? Well, if you're anything like the audiophiles, like Anthony here, then you'd probably find this kind of stuff fascinating. But it's also great for two other purposes. One, you can compare it with the manufacturer's specifications and see how accurate their claims are. Kanto advertises a frequency response of 50 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Logitech advertises 90 hertz to 20,000 hertz, while Samsung doesn't actually advertise the frequency response anywhere. The second purpose is to take this measurement and equalize it. Room Equalizer Wizard, as the name implies, can create a software equalization that corrects the frequency response of your speakers and even it out so it produces a neutral sound. But that's a video for another time. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. You can click here to check out our previous videos and check us out on Twitter over here. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for tens of benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIS. Get to listen, people. Mm.